Well, welcome everyone. Good afternoon if you're uh, Eastern time and I guess good morning if you are still in uh, the Pacific time zone. Uh, we are here, myself and my co-founder and good friend, Joanne Barefoot, to introduce the section on uh, FinTech regulation. And for the next 15 minutes, we're going to talk to you a little bit about the future of financial regulation and what we think that looks like. Uh, Joanne, do you think we should do quick introductions here? Absolutely, you Great. go ahead. So my name is David Eric, and uh, the executive director of AIR, the Alliance for Innovative Regulation. Um, we are a nonprofit organization that is really dedicated to uh, helping the regulators uh, engage and embrace technology, particularly uh, to transform the uh, regulatory system to a digitally native regulatory system. And we believe that there are many benefits for doing that, which we'll talk to you about over the next 15 minutes. Uh, I have 20 years experience in banking and payments. I was a general manager at American Express. Uh, also the head of credit card strategy at JP Morgan. Uh, I'm a co-founder of Pedal, which is a fintech startup, and most recently was just appointed to uh, the uh, community advisory board of the CFPB. So really an honor and exciting to be there. I'm here with uh, my co-founder, Joanne, who uh, also has an extraordinary background. She is a former deputy comptroller of the currency, uh, a, formerly a senior fellow at Harvard, uh, uh, has worked in uh, consulting both as a partner at KPMG and at Treliant, uh, and also is uh, very active in uh, defining the future of regulation, creating an entirely new intellectual capital vertical around uh, fintech innovation. Uh, the notion that innovation and uh, financial regulation are mutually exclusive uh, we're here to describe that that is an oxymoron no more. Uh, and with that, uh, I'd like to launch into our conversation. We have just 15 minutes today and uh, we're talking about the future of regulation. Joanne, what do you think that future is? Thank you, David. It's great to be here today. Uh, I think the future of financial regulation is exactly like the future of everything else, namely technology transformation. And we want to set the stage for the afternoon conversation today about regulation by striking an optimistic note. The world of financial regulation is changing all over the world uh, with a move into digital technology. We're in early days of this. It's going to take a long time. We all know how complicated this is. But the whole sector is going to change, as you said, to basically a digitally native framework. And why do we want to see that happen? It's partly that with better data and better data analytics and AI type tools in regulation and compliance, we can get better results. Number two, we can drive down costs. And number three, we can keep up with the incredible pace of digitization in the financial industry itself we are at risk of having a widening gap between the exponential rate of change in the uh, technology world and in, in including digitization in finance versus the linear pace of change that we usually see in the regulatory world. As you said, I'm a former bank regulator. We're not critical of that. Regulation has been doing the best it can with the tools that it's had in the past, but we need to do better now. And we also need to get to a system that's not just better, cheaper, and faster, but also that can be updated easily, readily, the way we uh, update things in the tech world. So we are very sure that this is happening for real, and we're excited about it. You know, we have seen uh, through uh, the year of 2020 has been an extraordinary year. And, uh, you know, we have seen the pandemic, the financial crisis, uh, the impact of Black Lives Matter. Um, you know, one of the uh, uh, opportunities that we see here is, or one of the challenges that we've seen is the inability of uh, our government technology infrastructure to really challenge and address the, the challenges uh, in front of us. Being able to sign up for the PPP, being able to sign up and verify unemployment. Uh, we've seen a tremendous opportunity to uh, bring 21st te century technology uh, to the kinds of problems and crises that we're facing today. Um, 
in an effort to try to modernize or argue for a modernization and digitization of the regulatory system, uh, AIR has published the RegTech Manifesto in July. Uh, and for those of you who are listening, you can access that at www.regulationinnovation.org. Uh, and Joanne, I wonder if you could give us a little bit of an introduction and an overview about the RegTech Manifesto. What's the goal? What makes it a manifesto? You know, uh, why did we do this? Absolutely. So we called it a manifesto in order to try to be intentionally provocative and get people to read it because it's not just another white paper. It's really a call to action on why we need to modernize the financial regulatory system for the digital age, how we would do that, what it should look like, uh, what are the attributes of such a system, and last and definitely not least, how would you actually get there from here? which is difficult. Again, we all know how hard it is to uh, change financial regulation. We issued the paper as a request for comments in RFC. We took some inspiration from Sir Tim Berners-Lee, who invented the World Wide Web 31 years ago, starting out with an RFC. And we're trying to solicit comments and we're getting comments from all over the world. And part of the dialogue that we're seeing changing is that Regulators everywhere are innovating. This very week, I know we have a lot of U U.S. listeners uh, in the program today. <coughs> Pardon me. Hang on. The um, uh, CFPB is holding a. David, it's a good thing that you're my partner. Why don't you finish it? Give some examples. <laughs> the CFPB is um, <laughs> holding a tax print. Uh, uh, specifically to address uh, e-disclosures. They've actually announced a tech sprint strategy uh, to uh, do tech sprints into the future. And so, so far they've announced two, one on e-disclosures, reviewing the, the disclosure process for consumers, and another one on making public access to Humda data for uh, mortgage information. Um, uh, but in both cases, what Joanne was referring to is that there is a lot of movement in the regulatory space towards modernizing and towards using a digital platform and using digital tools for innovation, like tech sprints, which for those of you who are listening might be more familiar with the notion of a hackathon. A tech sprint is just like a hackathon, but rebranded for regulators because um, of sensitivity around the word hacking. <laughs> I'll give a couple other examples. <clears throat> the, um, there's a lot of work going on on how regulators will encourage alternative kinds of data to be used in credit underwriting and including for um, uh, tools that would use AI for underwriting, which could be a tremendous driver of financial inclusion because we have could have more information about people who are hard to score today if they don't have a traditional credit history. We're seeing a tremendous amount of interest by regulators in Digital Regulatory Reporting, DRR. There are four projects we know of underway in the world. Tomorrow, <clears throat> the G20 will be announcing the winners of its global regulatory tech sprint. I have been a judge in that tech sprint in the category of digital regulatory reporting and uh, tremendous new thinking about how to create a, an, a self-executing regulatory system in which potentially the regulator can issue a requirement in the form of code and the industry can plug that into their systems and have a report come back almost instantly, move toward potentially uh, real time and full sets of data instead of the fragmentary data regulators use today. Um, the uh, Financial Conduct Authority in the UK has done a very, very important project on DRR in the United States. The FDIC uh, is in the midst of a sort of a slow motion tech sprint, a, a, a rapid prototyping project over about six months to rethink the bank call report and move it to a digital basis where the regulator would be able to see the data instead of just what comes in on a quarterly report, which is what they rely on today. And you and I are aware of another important uh, DRR project uh, by one of the states that's going to be announced pretty soon that we've been helping them with. So these are this is completely rethinking how 
uh, regulation is done. Where we know one agency where they've actually asked uh, a designer to come in and literally redesign, create a human-centered design approach uh, for one of the units in the organization to rethink everything from top to bottom, UX, information, organization, behavioral factors. You know, I mean, it's really, really a fresh wave of new thinking. And the the new thinking uh, is is endemic to the fintech world, right? So what we're really seeing is the regulators being able to uh, more effectively engage the innovation and technology that is being pioneered in the fintech world. And then not only learning about it so that they can do a better job of regulation, uh, but also uh, figuring out how they can use that new technology internally to do a better job of regulation as well. Um, you know, uh, I want to circle back to the RegTech manifesto. And uh, you mentioned that we're getting tons of, of input from people who are weighing in on the, on the issues here. Um, you know, uh, we're talking about a digital transformation of the regulatory system. It almost seems unbelievable. And I'm wondering if you can take a minute, Joanne, and paint a picture for us about what that would look like and why do we care? Well, as I said at the start, we need to care partly to improve the results of our regulation and compliance efforts because we have better tools today and we should use them but even more so because it's going to be necessary in order to keep up with the pace of technology around us. And if even as just a self-defensive step, uh, regulators are going to have to adopt new tools that can enable them to work faster. Uh, and that's not easy. Again, it's not easy for regulatory agencies to speed up because we don't allow them to fail. They have to get it right. So there's a blossoming of new efforts to create safe spaces for testing and experimentation uh, in order uh, to let that um, kind of result come. People say to us sometimes, uh, we don't think it's possible to do this. And again, I'm a long-term veteran of the regulatory world. I really understand that. Uh, I'm not naive. I used to work for the United States Senate, for example, and we're not, not naive. But, you know, David, we look at it and say, there's two reasons why this is going to happen. One is that it has to, in order to manage the changing risks in this system. And the other is that it already is. There are innovative visionary regulators all over the world. I'll offer a little tease for a session later today. I'm going to be doing a fireside chat with the chairman of the FDIC, Elena McWilliams, where she'll be talking about their approach. And just to give one example, which she'll explain more later, they have put out a, an RFI on the idea, and this is something of great interest, I think, to the people in this audience, the idea of uh, creating a standard setting organization, a public private body, and a uh, certification system for companies to be able to work with banks and meet their third party risk requirements, which uh, keep a lot of banks from being able to partner <clears throat> with fintechs or use vendors as fintechs and regtechs. And uh, the FDIC is nudging the world to thinking way outside the box uh, on a whole different approach to solving a problem like that through public-private interaction, nimble approaches, um, and uh, again, really creative thinking. So we're, so we're excited about it. So we have a great hope for the future of regulation. Uh, and we are really excited to uh, see this session on FinTech and regulation coming up. You've got an incredible lineup, people like Melissa Netram, who is the head of innovation at the CFTC, Chris Brummer, who is from Georgetown University, and of course, Yelena McWilliams, who is the uh, chairman of the FDIC, all coming up in this session. So uh, we're very excited to have the opportunity to introduce this, lay the groundwork for what the future of regulation could be, and uh, give you an opportunity to check out our RegTech manifesto at www.regulationinnovation.org. So thanks very much, Joanne. Thank you for the listeners. Uh, and uh, thank you for FinTech South. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks.